to Nusayba, Ummu Amara, as they call her. Who is she? We don't even know her age. We don't know anything about her before she became a Muslim. Very different from the others. Nobody knows. Why? That's something for you to remember. Because nobody will remember you unless you do something different. And that's why no one talked about her till she came to give allegiance to Rasulullah So this is about 1440 about 1430 plus years. So Rasulullah was still in Mecca. She was from Medina. She was Ansariya, as they call it. So she was born, raised in Medina, from Benul Najjar. But nobody knows anything about her at that point. And then Rasulullah sent the first ambassador in Islam. Who was that? You all should know the name. There's only one. The first ambassador in Islam, who was he? Who he was, or Rasulullah sent him to Medina. No. Mu'ad ibn Jabal was sent to Yemen. I, I heard it. Yes, Sayyidina Mus'ab ibn Umair. He was the first ambassador who Rasulullah wanted to see if he will migrate to Medina. Would that be a good place? Planning. Investigating, researching, searching. So he did. And Sayyidina Musa ibn Umayr did an amazing job. What happened afterward? You should all know this, but I don't want to talk about the seerah. I want to talk about points that should impact you and me as a woman. 74 people from Medina decided to come to Mecca and meet a Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam. 74. How many women among them? How many women? Only two. What's the ratio? It doesn't matter the number. It doesn't, what matters is, what did you do? So, Umm Amara and Asma, both of them. They didn't jump on Rasul and I'm coming and I have to do this. You can be very powerful and impactful, but in the right way. You don't even have to raise your voice. You don't have to go and write and do, but do the right thing. So what did they do? They wanted to give allegiance to Rasulullah Wasallam. This is Bay'atul Aqaba, the second one. She left Medina. She came with her husband and two of her sons and her sister. Came coming to Rasulullah Wasallam. But they didn't go to him and say, I want to do it. She sent the husband of Asma to Rasul and he said, Ya Rasulullah, the woman wants to give you the allegiance like the men. And what did he say? You need to know this because there's a hukum here. It's a fiqh ruling we're going to learn. What did he say? What did he say? You're close, but what did he say? He said, that's fine. Let them come and give the allegiance but I will not shake their hands. Because normally, how do you give allegiance to someone? You put your hand on top of their hand. He said, I will not. Did they get offended? Why me? Discrimination? Because I'm a woman? You know my point? Again, I'll say this every time I speak to women. Don't fall in that trap. Focus on the goal. They came because they want to make a statement. What was the statement that Nusayba did on that day? That the woman faith is as strong as the man faith. And whatever it will take to show this faith, she'll do it. So she came, gave the allegiance to Rasulullah went back to Medina. Nobody knows much now. Till when? Till when? When do we know her? Uhud, exactly. How many years? At least five, right? At least five or six, Uhud after Badr. What happened here? Women always, when they go for expeditions with the Rasulullah what do they do? They usually, in the back, serve the fighters or, 
or or take her care of the wounded. And that's what she did. Now, if you learn the rest, you will say, anybody else in this day, no, no, no. I don't want to stay in the back. No. I am as strong as them. I want to be in the front. Are you getting my point? She didn't. She was in the back. When did she come to the front? And this is a lesson for all of you. Wait till Allah use you. Don't jump to it. She didn't go out to make a statement. And so history will talk about her. And Rasul said this famous more than one statement about her. That's not her purpose. She went to serve Allah. She went to serve Allah the way usually woman serves Allah. But Allah had another plan for her. And what happened? What happened? Come on. It's Uhud. So as long as the Muslims were winning, she was in the back. Now what happened? You all know the story. Now things turned around. And what happened to the Muslim? The fighters, companions, what happened? They ran away. And this is how it's described. And if you read, you will find the same description. Very few people, they said, less than 10. Companions, Sahaba, ran away. Very few, less than 10, stayed shielding Rasul Who was it? One of them was she and her son. She and her son. She didn't go for that. But when the opportunity comes in to serve Allah, to do something most don't do, she was there. And what happened? She did not go out as a fighter, so she doesn't even have a shield. She ran with only her sword and bear, nothing. And the Rasul is behind her. The fighters were running, and the Rasul looked at one. There's no name. And he had a shield. And he said, if you are not fighting, give me the shield. He gave him the shield, and he gave the shield to Sayyidina Nusaybah. You know what is this? Again, when Allah wants to use you, he creates the opportunity for you. And he facilitated, and he facilitated, facilitated in a way, perfection. Don't do it. Don't do it with yourself, meaning, Ask him to use you, but don't put orders to Allah, as I say this to myself. I want it this way or that way. I want to serve you, Ya Rabbi. You want me to serve you as a speaker? I'm here. You want me to serve you as the person who cook the food to serve the people who attend the conference? I'm there. You know what I'm saying? Don't pick and choose. This is the deen of Allah. He chooses where he wants you, and where he's going to use you. And the result is the same. So her son comes in. She had two. Both of them died, but not in, uh, in Uhud. Habib and Abdullah. So Habib was running, and he, he had a wound in his arm, bleeding. And the Rasul told him, tie it and come to your mom. You, you need to feel this. It was a fiasco, it was a mess. They were losing and running. He comes in. What is she doing now? Now this is the mother. This is her son. Now this is the fighter. Look how many hats she was wearing. Now she's the nurse. She pulled her son. She had around her tied some bands because she was going out for nursing. She take one band, tie her son wound, bleeding, and what does she say? Go back and fight. Look at me and you. Go back and fight. What did he tell her, alayhi salatu wasalam? No one can do what you, you just did, ya Ummu Amara. 
This is one of the statements he said about her. No one can do that. Your son and everybody is being killed in the mass, bleeding. Anybody else will say, you know, he's bleeding, go home. My baby. Not Umm Amara. Not Nusayba. Allah knows you and me what would have done. And then she sees a warrior coming to kill Rasulullah. She has nothing. She's not a fighter. But when you have the faith, when you really love Allah, when He puts you in the place where He wants you to defend, I'm there. And then He comes in and they were all on horses. She was not riding. They were all standing. And that man comes in and he missed her, then turned and then she hit the horse and the horse fell and the man fell and then she killed him. Nusayba. That's why he said, We cannot do what you are doing. That's a woman, one only. And then at that point, she said to Rasulullah, what did she say? Pray for me and my family in the middle of the battle. Pray for me and my family that we are with you in Jannah. And of course, he prayed for her. Did you see the point? In the middle of whatever, the focus is what? Zal-Akhirah, Jannah, where I am going, what do I want to do? It's not this life, it's the way I look, uh, what I have, where is my child is going. The focus is Zal-Akhirah, including with how I use my children, because that's why she told her child, go, done. I took care of it, go back. Subhanallah, is this is done? Do you think that the only landmark of Sayyidah Nusayba is because of her courage? Then you don't know the, uh, well the seerah. There's a verse in the Quran was revealed because of her. There's a different opinion about whether it was Umm Salama or was Nusayba, Sayyidah Nusayba. What was this verse? Or what, was, what did she come and say? She came to Rasulullah and says, Ya Rasulullah, everything in the Quran is for the men. Now equality. Now I want my rights. But what rights she was looking for? She said, Ya Rasulullah, all the rewards goes to the men. The rewards goes to the men. What about us? And then Allah revealed. It's in Surah Al-Ahzab, which most of you, inshallah, you know the verse. And then Muslimina, or Muslimat, or Mu'minina, والمؤمنات والقانتين والقانتات والصادقين والصادقات والصابرين والصابرات والخاشعين والخاشعات والمتصدقين والمتصدقات والصائمين والصائمات والحافظين فروجهم والحافظات والذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات أعد الله لهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما And this is one of the few verses where Allah divided the gender. You're a Muslim, she or he. A believer, she or he. Submitting to Allah, he or she, or she and he. He started with he and she. That's when I ask for my rights. That's when I want to be equal, if not in the front run. It's not everything. That's a Sayyidah Nusayba. The other thing, her son, Abdullah, was the only Sahabi who described the wudu of a Rasul What an honor. All these Sahaba, it's her son, described. Third thing for her, another hukum. So I want you to know it's not about courage only. What she has that we all need, especially this day and age, the yaqeen, the certainty, the unshakable faith, I call it. This is who she was. Unshakable faith. I am a servant to Allah wherever Ya Allah you put me. So Rasulullah came to visit her. What was she doing? She was fasting. He was not. 
She served him food. And he said, why you are not eating, Ya Nusayba? Umm Amara said, I'm fasting, Ya Rasulullah. What did he tell her? Anybody knows? Yes. He said to her, the angels pray for the house that the owner is fasting and he serves food to people. What a faith, practicing faith, courage. Uhud was not the only one. She was involved in one of the most unique allegiance to Rasulullah That's what they say if you read about her, they tell you she is one of those who Allah said, I am pleased with her. Can you claim this? Can I claim this? How dare I am? But this one is not a claim. It's true. It's a fact. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Fatih, لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ يُبَايِعُونَكَ تَحْتَ الشَّجَرَةِ فَعَلِمَ مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ فَأَنزَلَ السَّكِينَةَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَأَثَابَهُمْ فَتْحًا قَرِيبًا Let's translate. Allah said, Allah is pleased. عن المؤمنين, the believers. But who are they? Which one? Not everybody. This is specific. Those who gave you allegiance, under the tree. She was there. Second. And this witch allegiance is when Sayyidina Uthman went to Mecca and the news came in that he was killed. And Rasul says, who is going to give me allegiance will be with me and we will get our revenge against or for Sayyidina Uthman. It was a rumor. She was there. Billah alaykum. When I was reading this, when I was writing and preparing this, I took a pause and I said, can I say laqad radiyallahu anil al-mu'mineen on myself? Can I claim it? Do I even have the, 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 the audacity to say it? Of course she say it. And of course she can say it with full confidence. Why? Because Allah said it. Allah said it. Her son, so now she's a mother. Her son, Rasul sent him to talk to Musaylama al kadhab Musaylama, the one who claimed prophethood. And Musaylama stood in front of him, her son, Habib, and he said, do you bear witness that, Rasool, that, that Muhammad is Rasulullah? He said, I do. And he said, do you bear witness that I am a messenger? And he says, no. Every time he asks him this question, the answer is no. He chop one part of his body, a hand, an arm, every part till he died. Later on, in the Yamama, in the battle of Yamama, after the death of Rasulullah, she was there fighting with her other son. And she saw him dead. And she said the meaning of Alhamdulillah, that Allah made my heart in peace because he was killed. Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Sayyidina Umar, the giants, men, they used to go and visit her specifically. You want your right? You want to be identified? You want to be special? It's not words. It's action. It's action. And it's a hard one. And somebody, most people don't do it, but you will do it. Not to impress anyone other than Allah. Not looking for any praise other than His praise. Not wanting anything of this dunya other than the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She died 13 years of Hijrah. They said that she died at the time of Sayyidina Umar. No one talk about how she looks like. This is what I want to end. No one said about her skin color, or how long her hair, or what was her weight, or how tall, or what did she dress, or where she bought. But everyone talks about her courage, sacrifice, faith, Certainty, how much we have of this. 
سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه تسليما كثيرا جزاكم الله خيرا